In this video, we're going to be talking about the best ways to safely open your garage door in case of an emergency. Let's party. Okay, here's my disclaimer. The pro tips, techniques, and ideas expressed in this video should not be considered law or infallible. Why? Because I am nobody. Therefore, please proceed with caution when opening up your garage door in the event that there is an emergency. Okay, so right off the bat, I wanna make sure I am clear here. This video is not designed to profit or to get views or to get popularity in the current situation that our dear friends and family and our fellow man is experiencing right now in the East Coast, particularly in Texas. By no means, Am I trying to uh, encourage you to watch this video as clickbait uh, based on kind of what people are experiencing right now? And if you feel like it is, go ahead, go ahead and click off. Uh, you don't have to stick around for the party. Uh, whatever's going to be mentioned in this video is solely for the purpose of helping those out there in a very tough situation right now due to the weather, particularly in Texas. That being said, I have family in Texas. I have my beautiful parents in Texas. I have family in South Texas, and I wish I could do something for them. So if this is one way to do that, well, keep on watching the video. And of course, before applying any principles expressed in this video or any of my other videos, it's important to understand that not one scenario fits all. At the same rate, it's vital, absolutely vital that you know the condition of your garage door before opening or closing it. I can't stress how many times sometimes customers are unaware that they have a broken torsion spring or they have something wrong with their door system and they decide to open or close their garage door and it collapses or it has problems. So please, it's vital that you do safety inspections regularly on your garage door. It is vital to know whether you have good balance and it is vital to be aware if you have a broken spring to your garage door because if you do then it will be very difficult in fact you probably most likely will not be able to exit your garage or leave your garage safely with a broken spring so keep all those things in mind because it's important before moving forward in safely opening your garage door Okay, so your first line of defense is going to be the emergency release cord. This is the red cord that is connected to your trolley carriage. And it basically looks like this. It's just a red cord like this that you're able to pull on. You're able to pull on it from arm's reach. You shouldn't have to tippy toe. You shouldn't have to get on a ladder. You shouldn't have to jump up to get it. It should just be dangling like so in a way that's, you know, it's away from your vehicles, perhaps maybe luggage rack or inconspicuously just, you know, hanging right there. So that way in the event that you need to release it from your garage door opener to the garage, well, you can do so and then lift the door up. You know, I have a lot of these around. These. Uh, emergency releases happen to be the genie ones and um, some of the older genie ones like I think like the genie one on the 1024 it is horrible it's poor it'll tend to break so if you have a 1024 model you know buy, go out and buy one or perhaps maybe make yourself one out of a little bit better rope you, you kind of do need a thin style for it um, but the point is is that you should have this already installed onto your garage door opener trolley carriage that connects to the garage door by pulling it you're able to disengage the garage door trolley and you should be able to lift the door by yourself if your garage door is properly balanced or with the help of someone else again these are even packaged inside the box for example when you buy your liftmaster garage door opener motor you get one of these emergency release cords already built inside, inside the package, good to go all day, every day. Okay, party people, so what we have here are kind of just some examples of what a clevis and cotter pin are. Uh, these two pieces work together. And of course, if you have something like this from the LiftMaster brand, well, it's going to come with, again, the operator bracket. We just did a video about that. If you're interested in checking that out, you can do so at the link right here. 
Um, but this is the LiftMaster product or the LiftMaster operator bracket and it has a clevis pin with a cotter pin. So now, like I mentioned here, you necessarily don't want to use this as your first option to release or disengage the garage door from the garage door opener motor. But in the event of an emergency and only when your garage door is closed, well, then you should be able to do so. Now you're not only having to disengage or taking this clevis cotter pin off, but you actually have to lift up the door from there. So here we have, again, that was the LiftMaster example. There's a Genie example as well. And if you notice, both of them have a very similar design language. Now we're also gonna look at another example of the trolley carriage housing. Basically the trolley carriage is that piece that connects to the trolley it's that piece that's designed to work up and down the garage door, whether it's a chain drive or a belt drive, and even a screw drive. The difference with the screw drives, like for example, in the Genie product, they have this uh, Genie trolley carriage, and so it doesn't necessarily need a trolley inside. The screw drive just simply turns and this connects to it when it's engaged like so and then you have it disengaged. So again, that's the Genie example. That happens to be probably one of the more easier ones to disengage and pull from the emergency release cord. Uh, clearly, I don't have one on this one, but you definitely do wanna have an emergency release cord. You want it at a specific distance so that you're able to release the garage door opener motor from the door. Of course, we have some examples from the screwdriver from LiftMaster. And um, this is kind of more of the Chamberlain example. This is the Chamberlain trolley carriage. I'm not a big fan of these. I prefer the LiftMaster trolley carriage. Uh, it is much more sturdier. Uh, I tend to find that it's well designed. It's better than this design because in the LiftMaster version, as it's sliding the trolley up and down the garage door rail assembly, well, you basically you're not having to deal with the uh, trolley carriage disengaging or damaging. I see these things damaged. You can probably even tell. You see how it's a little bent? I see these get damaged from time to time. And again, this happens to be the Chamberlain product. So this is more of like your retail style trolley carriage. Now let's say that you're not able to get inside your garage because you have a detached garage, which means that there's no man door that is from your home into the garage. There is no man door from the outside into the garage. The only way to get into the garage is through the garage door. And well, with no power, no ability to be able to get into the garage, what can you do or what should you do? Well, in those circumstances, it's a little bit tougher because if you don't have an emergency key release in place or installed, then you're pretty much stuck. And I do highly recommend that if this is your circumstance, if this is your situation, then invest the money into having an emergency key release installed. This happens to be the one from Genie right there. And this one is, it's pretty self-explanatory. It is a emergency key release that you're going to put on the outside of the garage door. You're gonna basically install this in the top section. And what it does is it is, it is designed with a cable and a, and a hook that will connect to the actual trolley carriage to the garage door opener motor. Now this is kind of like the Genie brand, I guess you could say, but it will work with any brand out there. You should be fine with LiftMaster, Lanier, Morantic, whichever ones that you're currently using. And you don't necessarily have to go with this particular product. There's a number of universal emergency key releases that you can find at your major retail stores, on your online stores and so on and so forth. But the point being is this, again, if you have no access from the outside into your garage and your only way to get into the garage is the garage door, then you have to, you must, it is imperative to have an emergency key release installed. And last but not least, if your garage door opener motor happens to have a battery backup inside of it, well then it will open up the garage door without having to utilize any power that's to your home. Now, this is an important part because quite frankly, these batteries, well, they're not perfect. This happens to be the LiftMaster battery. 
and this is a 12 volt 4.5 amp battery it is an acid battery so it does have to be replaced I would say probably every two to three years. In fact, your garage door opener motor will give you a sign or give you a notification, a beep, to let you know, hey, it needs to be replaced. Now, the point that we wanna emphasize with regards to battery backup garage door opener motors is that they are not the ultimate solution. They should not be promoted or presented as the ultimate safety feature. That's just not the case. It's a nice added feature, but if you don't have it, you're still able to get out your garage. This will just simply utilize your garage door opener motor to open up your garage door in the case of loss of power. Hey party people, if you're getting value out of this video, please do me a favor and smash that like button. In fact, if you haven't yet, consider subscribing because on this channel we provide you pro tips and tech reviews for all your residential garage door needs. Now let's get back into this video. And so what we've covered right now with regards to the emergency release cord, the clevis cotter pin, the battery backup, the emergency key release, all of these different aspects and being able to open up your garage door due to loss of power or in an emergency can apply to roll up doors and swing up doors. So if you have either one, you should be able to implement the same principles to be able to get your door open safely. Now, one thing that I do want to caution is that if you are in a rush, if it is an emergency and you're having to uh, simply just quickly exit the home, exit your garage, uh, please stay calm. Uh, be mindful of your surroundings, particularly your garage. Uh, if it's not fully open or not fully closed, you know, I have seen in cases where due to an emergency circumstance or maybe we get a little frazzled due to our situation that we just don't see the garage door open up all the way and it's like halfway open. And so that has happened. And when you're in that situation, you know, you're backing out and you're hitting the garage door and it's perhaps maybe damage your vehicle or damage the garage door. By no means am I trying to scare you. I'm just simply emphasizing that you want to be mindful of your surroundings, mindful of your situation, so that way you can safely exit your garage door and get to your next destination. Now, I want to end with this final thought. By no means is this video designed to create fear, to monetize, or profit from the bad situation that our dear friends and family in Texas are going through. Like I had expressed in the beginning of this video, I have family in North of Texas and in South Texas, throughout all over Texas. In fact, I know that many of them are doing fine, but still they're going through a difficult time based on the circumstances. I have friends over there. I have work colleagues in Austin and near the uh, um, Oklahoma border. The point that I'm trying to get at is, is that I have an invested interest in what's happening over there and not being able to provide practical help for them it kills me I, I wish i could go out over there and help them but it's you know just not possible so this video is kind of a way to do that it's a it's a way to just provide help for those out there who perhaps need to get out of their garage in case of an emergency now by no means should you also go out and purchase any of the items or any of the, anything that I described in this video uh, based off of fear uh, because that's not good either. We should never make purchases based off of fear because th it's not the right motive. If we're going to do anything for the betterment of our life, if we're going to make any purchase to be prepared in the future, it should be based out of love. If we make a decision based out of love because we wish to be prepared for our family to take care of their well-being, to take care of our neighbor, to not be a burden to them, in fact, even extend a helping hand to them, well, that's great. When we are motivated by love, we are motivated by love to make good buying decisions, good decisions all, to, all around, we end up winning in the end. And so again, I just wanted to stress that that this video is not designed to, you know, make money off of a bad situation. That's not the case. I felt that I had to do this in my heart because it was weighing on my mind since all this has started. And I figured it was just one way to help you party people for all that y'all are. I mean, all the great 
uh, feedback and all the all the views and all that I appreciate that I really really do but it, again this channel is designed to provide pro tips and tech reviews for all the residential garage door needs and this is just one way that I think I can just give back to this community thanks again for partying with me check out this other video right here that YouTube thinks that you should watch of course if you have a question or a comment leave one down below I appreciate you watching this video y'all stay safe